On today's Locked On Texans podcast, we are joined by NFL prospect Jacquez Bristol, and we also look at how the Texans finally restructured Shaq Mason's contract. What does that mean for the team moving forward? You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Houston Texans fans, welcome to this Wednesday episode of the Locked On Texans podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. If this is your first time watching or listening to the Locked On Texans podcast, please be sure to subscribe, like, and comment to the podcast on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, follow on Twitter at Locked On Texans. And thank you to all of our returning listeners lending your ear for another episode as Cody and I continue to talk Texans. On the other side of the screen, y'all know who it is. Texans credential mini member, Sports Illustrator's own beat reporter, Cody Davis. I'm your Texans football analyst, John, some sports guy, Hickman. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Today, we're going to look at the Texans opening uh, preseason up with the Hall of Fame game versus the Bears. This would be their first Hall of Fame game. Technically, they, they second. Have... Technically, they second because they did it in two thousand and two before the inaugural season. That's right. But yeah, this time, right. they actually have a Hall of Famer to yeah, be celebrating exactly. and playing for. So they open up the preseason against the Bears. We have a uh, amazing exclusive one-on-one with NFL hopeful and prospect Jacquez Bristol. But we open up today's show taking a look at the Texans and how they finally get the restructuring of Shaq Mason's contract. Mm. So let's get into those details and also just kind of discuss – what does that mean for this team moving forward? Well, hopefully this restructuring will mean that the Houston Texans are finally going to address that safety unit. But, um, John, as you put it on yesterday morning, the Houston Texans did restructure um, Shaq Mason's contract. They had an opportunity to save about $6.4 million, which now puts them somewhere in the ballpark, the 20 to $21.4 million in salary cap space. I'm not going to get too excited and say that they are about to take a big swing at somebody, nor am I going to get too excited and say that they're about to make one big splash in free agency. However, John listeners and viewers for me, I just think that this move is definitely going to keep the Houston Texans in a position to stay true to what general manager Nick Casario and head coach D'Amico Ryan said at the NFL combine about a month ago. Um, both of those guys came out and said that the top priority for the Houston Texans were to add depth at every single position. And I think they have done a very good job at staying true to that. Yes, I understand there are some positions where I look at it and say, well, if the season starts tomorrow, I'm still not as confident as I would be in, let's say, 2023. But at the same time, I do like the fact how they're just keeping this open because, look, you never know, especially after the NFL draft, you know how, you know, certain players might become available once again, depending on, you know, what transpires with other respect with other um, respected teams. But I just think that this move is definitely going to keep the Houston Texans in, in the ballpark to where they could continue revamping their roster and hopefully moving beyond the divisional round in 2024. I 100% agree. I think this move allows Houston to have insurance money, right? Mm -hmm. I think this will be a move that outside of the last couple of days, we've seen the Texans sign Miles Bryant, the cornerback, coming from New England, right? I think you guys will like him. He, he'll he be a guy that will be in a position battle at camp with Desmond King, slot guy, a really good player when everybody else around him is pretty good. So I think the Texans will like him. I think fans will as well. Um, but – when you look at some of the last couple of signings for Houston, they've all been under the radar moves, right? Mm -hmm. I think this insurance money of clearing up this amount of cap space now north of $20 million does allow Houston to, like you said, Cody, post draft, maybe go out there and swing for the fences. This team right now feels like it's a swing for the fences move away, hmm. right? We know that they've addressed the depth cornerback, D line, 
Mm-hmm. Like the offensive line is already intact in terms of depth. I That's throw linebacker in there. Linebacker is nice. You got Christian Harris, Al Shahir, uh, Henry Toto, uh, and I think that they add a linebacker. I think that they have guys on this roster already at that linebacker position, especially considering this is a team that ran a lot of nickel last year. Mm-hmm. So you don't need a, a room full of just you know five or six mm-hmm. linebackers. I don't think that's needed. The cornerback room is deep, but again, this is a team that honestly truly feels like it's one move away, one big move away. They've done a lot of small moves uh, outside of that first week where we saw Joe Mixon and Autry and, and Daniel Hunter. They've done small moves here and there that has helped build – uh, this team in areas that was honestly needed and necessary, but there are moves that are needed and necessary that we have not seen yet. Again, whether that be on the offensive side, desperately upgrading the wide receiver room. Hmm. We did a uh, mock draft with the Locked On Network with the 42nd overall pick. Some of you guys may not like this, but we chose Xavier Worthy out of UT. He's a guy that is, you know, super fast, uh, can get open, can create that separation. And again, we're going off the words of what general manager Nick Serio and head coach D'Amico Ryan said. They want guys that are able to get open. And outside of, you know, Nico Collins, who is a big body receiver, he can make plays with his hands. Really, outside of Tank Dale, there is not another receiver on this roster aside from those two that we trust. Mm-hmm. We want to see John Metchie be successful and succeed. We, we want to see him be that dominant third, fourth option for this team. But we cannot place that trust on him right now. We, you know, I don't want to put the like that with the Kendrick Lamar, but, you know, if you just got that album out, we don't trust you. <laughs> and that's simply based off of what we've seen, not based off of what we know, because we all believe that he can get to that level. But they got to address it, right? And does that money give them insurance to address it post-draft? Does that money give this team insurance to address the safety position maybe post-draft? That may be a guy that they really like in the draft. That If they're not able to grab him, then maybe you go out there and scour the market and say, well, Diggs is still available, Simmons is still available. And I honestly think they should bring one of those guys in regardless of uh, who they like that are on their draft board. But there was a team last year in the Houston Texans that were close to being last in the NFL in passing defense. And the safety unit was a big reason why, whether it was bad play or just guys not being able to stay out on the field health-wise. And so you're looking at a lot of shuffling going on in the D backfield. Overall, I think this is some good, really good insurance money for this team that allow them to just really sit back and say, when the deal is ready, when the deal is right, the deal that we want, that we believe will improve this roster, we got the money to either a sign two good guys or maybe take on a major contract. With the Houston Texans getting some insurance money, go ahead and do the same for yourself by saying goodbye to those busted brackets. Because right now, FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed making it to the dance, it's time to go dancing uh, on America's number one sports book. Uh, FanDuel, right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 wins, that's 200 bucks in your pocket to use on point spreads, money lines, you pick it. Don't matter what it is. You can even pick who's going to win it all. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut the nets down. Go Cougs. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, to this Wednesday installment of Locked On Texans. And as promised, I have with me NFL draft prospect Jaquez Bristol, defensive lineman from Central Michigan. Jaquez, what's going on, man? And welcome to Locked On Texans. Thank you for having me, man. It's a blessing to be here, man. I'm just trying to take every opportunity I get and just put my name out there more. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, sir. You said I could call you by your nickname, Quezzy, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. So, cool, Quezzy, let's jump right into it, man. And I'm going to start off with one of my favorite questions because a lot of people who've been rocking with Locked On Texans, been reading my work over at Sports Illustrated, knows that every single year I always try my hardest to interview as many draft prospects as possible because I myself was once a young <laughs> a youngin, you know, hoping and dreaming of playing yeah. in the NFL. But unfortunately, Jeez. it didn't work out for me. <laughs> but 
Quasi, man. Um, I just want to know, man, the NFL draft is officially a month away, less than a month away, which means you are 30 days away from achieving a lifelong dream. Can we just start with you just just describing what this entire draft, pro draft process has been for you? Um, It's been very good for me. It's been like learning tools along the way. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is very professional based. And mm -hmm. it's been a blessing, and I can I can say it teaches you how to put the work in, on and off the field. <clears throat> but mm -hmm. like for example, like this interview alone shows you just how to be a professional and putting that time in to be able to connect with others. And then like that's really that's really it for me. And I I'm taking advantage of that, being able to be professional with people, learning how to talk to people, and just grasping other uh, advantages. I would say. Mm, sounds good. You know, speaking of, you know, being a professional, what are some of the feedbacks that you are receiving? Because I'm pretty sure over the last couple of weeks, over the past couple of months, um, you have had an opportunity to talk to NFL coaches, NFL scouts doing interviews and stuff. Just what are some of the feedbacks that they're telling you on how to improve what you need to do in order to get ready for the NFL, both on and off the field? Um, A few things that I got was uh, some of some of the things I, I heard about was uh, I love your play style, stuff like that. Uh, no mm -hmm. matter your size, you a, you a beast. Uh, <clears throat> and then one of the scouts was telling me my best game that he felt was my Michigan State game. And then just the on the field things that they was telling me, uh, basically get more in shape, uh, just be more physical, I would say, and stuff like stuff things in that area. Mm. You know, you know what the next question is going to be. You got to tell tell me more about this Michigan State game. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I feel like I just went in knowing what I had to do this year and knowing knowing what it took and being that leader, me being that uh the leader of our uh team last year, I felt like mm -hmm. it was needed. So that was really what it was. Just trying to put my name out there more and be able to reach my goals. Mm. Speaking of, you know, the game against uh, Michigan State, you know, you played five seasons at Central Michigan mm -hmm. and had a very successful career in, in 57 games, 144 total tackles, 13 sacks. But numbers only tell half of the story. Um, in what ways do you feel your career at Central Michigan has helped you prepare for the NFL? Um, I think my football career at CMU has provided me with, like, with a solid foundation in terms of skill development, uh, teamwork, discipline, mental toughness, leadership and consistency, but also like mm -hmm. all, all of like, which are crucial, but for excelling at the NFL level, additionally, the competitive environment of the college football has helped me as well, as many people may know, but uh, <clears throat> it helped me hone in my competitive edge and which are essential qualities for success in the NFL. Mm. And I, I, I couldn't help but notice, you know, majority of the attributes that you gave, it kind of mm -hmm. goes hand in hand with, you know, improving in ways and focusing on things that doesn't have to do with the X's and O's of, foo of, of football. And right. one of the things that I'm starting to learn is a lot of the success, whether on the high school, collegiate, or the pro level, a lot of it has to do with the work that you put in off the field and stuff. Yeah. So you can you really quick, can you just talk about the importance of making sure that you just take care of the little things, the little nuances that goes into, you know, getting ready for the NFL? Um, just taking it day by day, honestly, and just being able to learn from anybody, like being mm -hmm. able to uh, be able to listen and learn, like learning is very key, honestly, because you never learn, you never at your highest peak, you can always grow, no matter where you at, you can be a vet in the league, you can still grow. So it's just like, I feel like if you if you have a learning mindset and want to learn and willing to learn, I feel like that's that's the key on, off the field and on the field, I would say. Mm. Who are some of the people at Central Michigan that you, you know, had an opportunity to learn from, whether it be, you know, upperclassmen, whether it be coaches? Oh, it's been many. Uh, One dude that I know personally, mm -hmm. well, I know a lot of them personally, but the one I talk to the most would be Thomas Incom, play for the Denver Marcos right now. But uh, mm. it's another one, Troy Harrison. Uh, he was with the Texans, actually. Oh, I said that. That didn't yeah. sound very familiar. Yeah. Fullback, right? <laughs> yeah. We played D-line together. So, I mean, I, I came around a few of them. Uh, mm -hmm. Mark Raymond, I played with him as well. Uh, Luke Gadecki. It's plenty of dudes that's in the league right now that I've 
I've had conversations with, and mm -hmm. I just know how to work on and off the field. So, Troy Harrison, really quick, because he is someone who you know plays for the Texans and stuff. Troy yeah. Harrison, um, have you had an opportunity to talk to him since you not, declared to it for the NFL draft? Actually, not recently. Just mm -hmm. I've been in the ground process, and I know he's probably busy a lot too. So yeah, we haven't came across yet, but I'm pretty sure we will. <laughs> awesome sounds good man sounds good so you know speaking of your time at central michigan you know while i was doing some of my research um about you one of the things i noticed that this is a school that you actually choose over some options that you had include including southern mississippi so what was it about southern michigan that made you say that's where i want to go honestly like me coming out me coming out of high school i really didn't know like much about um i would say like colleges but i knew what home felt like Mm -hmm. so I, that's what I based my my uh, decision off of, and I feel like Central Michigan, Central Michigan was like more interested in me, and mm -hmm. I want to be a part of a program that cared. Not saying the other university didn't, but it was just clear to, clear enough to me that Central cared more. So that was that was easy for me. That was like a no brainer when it came to that decision. Mm. You actually had an opportunity to take the starting job over an upperclassman. Uh, how much did that moment kind of help lay the groundwork towards a successful college career for you? Um, it was a it was a great opportunity, but I would say I took advantage of the opportunity that was presented to me mm -hmm. and never looked back. Honestly, it showed me the pros and the cons. A few pros was was you have to put in work, being able to be coachable, being consistent. Then later you'll be rewarded. So that's how I looked mm -hmm. at it as a, as a pro side, but as a cons, <clears throat> the cons are, are that your sport is all, your spot is always up for grabs. Uh, you may have doubt from others. Me being a freshman, I had mm -hmm. a lot of doubt. people probably didn't trust me that I knew the playbook, but it took time for me to actually hone in and be, be professional and take the time out to go learn the plays and, have hours, countless hours after. So also while doing my research, um, I ran across a story um where you stated that your late cousin A Brown is one of the reasons why you began playing football at a at a young age, I believe A six, if I'm not mistaken. Um, what can you share about your late cousin and you know, just reminiscing on the time he actually introduced you into the sport? Um, A was one of a kind, man. He always was there for me. Uh him being one of the hometown heroes made me want to play mm -hmm. football and take it and take it serious. So that's what really influenced me. Uh, he taught me how to put in the work and also what it takes to get to the next level. And then he, he also, he always gave me pointers no matter what it was, no, no matter what it consists of. Mm -hmm. He was really one of my favorites. I mean, I don't like to hone in uh, too much about it because it hits me in a different spot, but yeah, as of right now I can be able to talk to you about it right now. So mm. that's all so I have. <laughs> sounds good sounds good last question before i let you go um as you know i cover the houston texans and as of right now the houston texans are in need of a defensive tackle you know coach D'Amico ryan's is always looking to improve that defensive yeah. line as you probably know looking for players who embodies that swarm mentality um defensive mindset um yeah. What would be your pitch, not just to the Houston Texans, but what would be your pitch to any team um, one month away from the NFL draft? And along those same lines, what makes you different from all the other prospects? Okay, first, now that you brought, like, Houston up, uh, I will say Houston is a very great organization that brings juice. That's an organization I would be more than happy to be a part of. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so from, that, from the front office on down to the staff members, the qualities I bring – this for any any team. The qualities I bring to the table as a as a draft prospect is that I'm very passionate, very professional, athletic, versatile. I'm a fast learner, uh, competitive, and I have a leadership qualities. And then also, what separates me from other players at my position, I'm different from others that play my position because first by my quickness off the ball and my heart alone. And what I always say to myself, I fear no no one, no matter my size. So I'm not mm. scared of nobody. I'm not scared to go against nobody and line up. So that's just me. That's my mentality. You've seen it as a freshman. I was out there with the big dog. So awesome. Sounds good, man. One more thing before I let you go. Okay, no give problem. me, give me two of your favorite moments as 
a player at Central Michigan. Just two, two oh, moments. Your oh. top two moments. Because <laughs> once again, you had a very successful career. <laughs> okay. I would say playing back home my freshman year against Miami, and I had a sack safety. And that was, okay. that was the reason I would say that is because on my side of the family, I'm the first to go to college for me to mm. come back to my home state and play the way I did in front of my family was an all time high for me. Mm. But another moment would be, Oh, when it went in a uh, Tony Tiger bowl against Washington state with my guys, man, my teammates, man. That's team. I want to remember we had a lot of we had a lot of good dudes on that team. So, twenty twenty one. Awesome, sounds good, my man. Well, thank you so much for appearing as a guest here on Locked On Texans. Hopefully, this isn't the last time we have an opportunity to do so. Because if you do have an opportunity to join the Houston Texans, I'm pretty sure you're going to be seeing a lot of myself and my co-host John Hickman. So, Mr. Bristol, man, thank you so much once again. Good luck, my guy. Hopefully, I see you soon, man. It's an honor. Appreciate you. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to the next big event near you. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all of the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seats, and best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. All in prices show up. Uh, show your total upfront so you know exactly what you're getting uh, before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps, right? Tap, tap. Got my tickets. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On, L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back, Locked On Texas listeners and viewers. Before we close out today's show, it has been announced. Texans <laughs> will open up preseason uh, in the Hall of Fame game versus the Chicago Bears. Uh, I doubt we see C.J. Stroud and Caleb Williams go against each other if that's who the Chicago Bears choose to draft. And with the number one overall pick at the trade of Justin Fields, I think that's the way to go. <laughs> uh, but – you know, for me, I think I just want to mention how good it is to see this franchise, the team we've covered through the good just now. And no, but I the, say the, the, the good, that's only been one year. Right, the good, uh, the, the, the collapse, but the bad, and then the, it got really ugly down here. He's right. Uh, all these different type of quarterbacks, the Driscoll cat, you name it, we saw it with the ugly and bad. But to see them in this positive light because they had a player so good at his position, mm. he is now into the Hall of Fame, man. That's amazing. It's 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 amazing to see Cal become the sole, you know, you know, operator and owner of this team. It's amazing to hear the news of that. And now to see that the Houston Texans will represent uh, their franchise because of Andre Johnson in the Hall of Fame game versus the Bears. I don't think neither one of those quarterbacks will play, but that is some good positive news. I think if anything, they probably take a snap or two, um, especially CJ. Well, well, if anything, Caleb Williams, if that's where the Chicago Bears do draft at number one, um, they, I'm pretty sure we'll probably see a little bit more of him. He'll probably do like what CJ did last year in his um preseason debut, one series, maybe two, or whatever the case might be. But um, uh, man, I, I'm not surprised that the Houston Texans had this Hall of Fame game. However, I'm surprised that it's the, that it's the Chicago Bears because I thought that it would be the Carolina Panthers, given the fact that Julius Peppers is also going into the Hall of Fame alongside Andre Johnson. And we all know how, how, how great Julius Pepper was as a member of the Carolina Panthers. But uh, once again, man, this, that, that whole entire weekend is going to be a sign, is going to be... Is, is, is going to be the perfect opportunity to show how far the Houston Texans have came. Um, not just, you know, given everything that they had, had to overcome over the last two, three, four seasons, but just in general. I mean, this is still a, a very young franchise. And to see the youngest, the, the, yeah, they, they are the youngest franchise. And to see them, like I say, technically, this is their second. 
Hall of Fame game because they did it in, in 2002. But now there's some history behind this franchise. And to know that Andre Johnson, I still love this, is going to be the very first player in franchise history to get enshrined into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Plus, I know Texans fans, they're going to show out in Canton, Ohio oh, that yeah. whole entire weekend. Oh, yeah. So that's going to be a fun sight to see. But once again, man, shout out to – um. AJ80, man, you know, an all-time great. I'm trying to look, man. When was the last time the Dallas Cowboys played in the Hall of Fame game? Wasn't it, it just was, last year or the year before last? It was uh 2021. I know it was recently. Yeah, and they lost. Of course they, they did. It's the Cowboys. So all Houston got to do is show up, win, and <laughs> it's just another point in favor of Houston <laughs> Texans being a better franchise as of right now than the Dallas Cowboys. Don't don't kill me, guys. If you got Cowboy fans in the comments, I'm just saying, thank you all for watching and listening to this episode of the Locked On Texans podcast. Again, please be sure to subscribe, like, and comment on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, follow on Twitter at Locked On Texans. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, it's Cody Seal, T-Y-D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.